Okay, recording. So hi Josh and hi everyone. Um, the ladies and gents, please uh, uh, meet uh, Josh Clark, our uh, our keynote speaker at Product Camp uh, 2018. And today we are talking about your your pet peeves and uh, and things you've discovered and that you like maybe. Um, so bef before maybe we get into it, uh, would you mind introducing yourself to to our um, uh, attendee, our our participants? Sure. Hi everyone. I'm I'm Josh Clark, and I'm founder of a design studio called Big Medium in New York City. I'm actually in Las Vegas today, not in New York. Vegas, uh, right. Here with uh, with a client. Las Vegas is a place that is just covered with interactive surfaces. The whole city is interactive, and it's a it's a real playground for for designers in a lot of ways. So I'm excited to be here. Are you working with work dark patterns, Josh? Uh, I hope not. You know, it's obviously, you know, one of the things about Las Vegas is it is a it is a commercial yeah. playground, right, yeah. of of interaction and uh, with um, with some opportunities to steer people's behavior and mm. in certain fun directions and also probably some unhealthy directions. Yeah, so yeah. trying to find that balance of what is sort of good for people and and meets their expectations for why they're here in the first place without taking advantage of that is an yeah. interesting challenge. Yeah, yeah it, is, it is. I wonder if you could share some of that during product camp, but that is to be seen, yeah. right? Okay, yeah. so yeah. Um, coming to the first question, uh, one thing that you've discovered that you really like or, or, you know, very passionate about. Yeah, there's a little trend that's happening in the last few months, I think, of design tools suddenly becoming kind of machine readable, which is super exciting to me. And I'll okay. say why. But for example, Figma, the programming uh -huh. tool, just opened its API. Oh. Sketch is obviously very pluggable. Uh -huh. And so after all these kind of years of designers drawing pictures of uh -huh. websites, just a collection of pixels with no semantic meaning, uh -huh. suddenly we're being able to have sort of some structured design under the hood. So that the, the machines can make sense of our designs. Mm. And what I mean by that is, is that we're, we're able to, to suddenly be able to um, hand a design to a developer where it's got all this information embedded in it, yeah. design styles and, and design systems even. And so instead of having kind of pictures of components for a design system, we can actually start to have a, a layer of, of machine intelligence or variables that connect design tools and UX tools to developer tools so that we're all truly speaking, not only speaking the same language, which I think is a goal of design systems, well, but also actually using kind of the same actual underlying tooling just within the tools that we actually work best in. Mm. And I just, I think that it's it's pretty exciting. Oh, it's really cool. And, and, and most definitely, like, things are beginning to open up. But, like, uh, on this note, do you, do you believe that someday our jobs will become redundant, our jobs as designers? I think that some of the boring parts of our jobs will become redundant, which is to say well, there will be much less of sort of sitting next to a developer being like, no, six pixels instead oh, okay. of four okay. pixels. Move you it know, up. This and color notch. instead of that color. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, but also being able to use some shorthand because as the machines are able to start to understand language or our scribbles, that we can kind of just say, I want a carousel here instead of uh, a giant hero image. Mm -hmm. And the machines will recognize that yeah. either the, our sketch, you uh -huh. know, the sort of the uh -huh. notation we uh -huh. use on whiteboards, uh -huh. or the language and just be able to sort of rough it out for us. Yeah. And what about so, sketching sketching on, on an iPad or really on, on a piece of paper and getting a computer to sort of transfer that lo-fi uh, drawing onto a high fidelity uh, mock-up of, of a website or app. Do you think that's, yeah. that's, that's doable these days? I, I, mean, I think we're starting to see some experiments that way. Airbnb has a, has a, had a little sort of prototype tool that would convert um, whiteboard sketches mm. into and substitute in patterns from their design system. Mm -hmm. So it would do exactly what you're saying. Mm. Take a picture of the whiteboard and it would create a little starter page hmm. that you could actually start to work with. Yeah. There's a really interesting product called Word's Eye, which is um, you type in almost like a little story. There's an alien in the, de in the desert surrounded by blue light and standing next to a unicorn. You uh -huh. just type that uh -huh. and it renders a 3D image inside the browser that then you can be like wow. flying around this thing. And you can, so say, you can say any, anything, yeah? 
it, just about. It's got oh, a wow. remarkably large vocabulary wow. and image base. And so, yeah, as we start to look at these kinds of concepts that the, that the machines can understand, then we're able to yeah. sort of express our intention. And again, there's always going to be a need for us, but some of this low-level production work, yeah. uh, I think the machines can really start to help us with yeah. in productive ways. I still believe, I, I still hope that developer jobs will become redundant first. That would be nice in a way, you know, <laughs> thinking that designers would stick around a couple of years longer, but, you know, who knows? <laughs> That's the developers, I'm sure, say the reverse. Yeah, yeah, that, most right? likely. Uh, so what, well, on the flip side... We, we always have some yeah, yeah, yeah. tension some, between yeah, these yeah, two yeah, groups. Sure. We're trying to build the same thing. And I think it's often a problem of language and tools. And so if the machines can kind of help us to connect at a, at a more productive level, mm -hmm. I, I think some of that productive friction may be eased a bit. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Who knows? And on, on, a, on the opposite side... Uh, things that you've found particularly, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, mm, uh, unnerving or, 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 you know, things that you don't like, uh, a fad or something. Yeah, I think right, right now as we're speaking this week, there's a whole lot happening with Facebook in terms of discoveries of the way that they've been scraping data and using data that we weren't aware of in, yeah. in a variety of ways. Yeah. And the latest thing right now is, uh, you know, for users of the Android phone, watching your phone call logs and text logs and pulling the metadata from there. Yeah. They say, to help you kind of understand who your social network is, but it, it's really not a good feeling to yeah. sort of know that information that we thought was private yeah. is not. Yeah. And I think that what this it means is that I think for for designers, for product owners going forward, there's a real challenge of how do you, yeah. you know, run your business, yeah. but also have real transparency and care for the people who are your customers. Yeah, yeah. no, that's, that's true. But on the other hand, uh, you know, a, a, a phenomenon that you have just uh, brought up, like the Facebook, Facebook thing and, and, and big data and reading to your stuff, uh, I mean, that's not nothing new. I mean, uh, Google, uh, Google Mail, like 10 years ago, was, was uh, displaying ads based on the content of your email, and, and, and that was already a, a, a little uh, worrying pattern being there. So just out of that, you could, you could see where, where, where all is that going. Yeah, yeah, and and I think I think you're totally right. One of the things that's happening now, of course, is as we have sensors everywhere, these phones that we carry everywhere, information that you didn't know was being watched mm. is sort of suddenly available. Like you sort of understood with Google Mail what was happening. It's like, well, I'm giving Google my text and mm. it's using it. Now there's often cases where I think I'm using one service. Mm my phone, yeah. uh, but it's actually being consumed by another service. And sometimes that's totally benign and with good mm -hmm. intentions, but mm -hmm. as also as we've seen with some of this news around Cambridge Analytica, it can mm -hmm. be used in ways that we yeah. do not love Especially if you aggregate millions and millions of these little tidbits of information, yeah, for sure. Okay, cool, yeah. And uh, just a final question before, before we let you go, Josh. Uh, what is that one thing uh, that you strongly believe in, uh, UX or, or you know, industry related, something that is obvious to you but might not be that obvious to other designers and colleagues in the industry? It's a big question, Mache. Well, you know, I think it's, it, it connects with everything that we've been saying here, which I believe that designers have a really strong and urgent role in how to design for machine-generated systems. And I think that a lot of designers feel like that is the role for data scientists, oh, okay. and developers, engineers. Mm -hmm. And that we've kind of, yeah. And, and I think for a long time it has been, as they've mm -hmm. sort of figured out what's possible. But now as they show us what's possible, and with remarkable results, mm -hmm. Now it's our job as designers to figure out and to help them, uh, help data scientists and engineers mm -hmm. figure out how to use those algorithms in mm -hmm. productive ways, how to present data in responsible ways, and mm -hmm. how, to, uh, how to get data in yeah. real ways. How do, we, how do we communicate this stuff? How do we increase literacy for, for everyone around mm -hmm. the way that data is being used? So I, I think that right now is a, is a, it's, it's early, but a really important time for designers to engage with machine learning and algorithms. And it's, it's a totally different kind of design mm -hmm. because we're designing not so much for the happy path, for success. We mm -hmm. normally design for success mm -hmm. through a fixed 
path of information. Right now, what we need to do is learn how to design for uncertainty and failure. And, and how, do we, how do we manage things when the machines return really weird results, which they often do. Brilliant. And that's, I think, something that you'll be talking about uh, at Product Camp. Yeah, that's right, right. both in, in, uh, in my keynote as well as uh -huh. in the workshop. I'm yeah. really excited to share some of these ideas uh, and, and hear what uh, designers and product leaders are doing there. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I've noticed that your topic is, is uh, um, fell on the, on the good ground, and so to speak. Uh, your tickets are selling like crazy, so uh, I think other, other folks are also you know, uh, sharing that. Uh, that passion for the subject and um, wanting to learn more. So looking forward to that workshop as well. Me too. I'm cool. really excited. Josh, I uh, won't uh, uh, keep you for much longer. You have some important casino work to, to do. So, uh, <laughs> Pulling the slot machines. Yeah, the exactly. Uh, use the research, huh? That's right. Yeah. Call it the research. Okay. Thank you, Josh. Thank you very much. And looking forward to catching up uh, in June in Poland. Really excited for it. Thanks, Maciej. Thanks.